UCF history professor and News 6 political analyst Dr. Jim Clark joins us now. Jim, I feel like we just saw you. I know you had a long <laughs> night. Good morning. Thanks Good morning. for being here. And Charlie Chris, this is not going to be an easy race. This is really going to be a tough one. No, uh, the, you're thinking he's running against Ron DeSantis, but he's also running against $111 million. And uh, that's how much DeSantis has raised already. And he'll probably, you know, get another 30 or 40 million. And that's tough to counter, especially in an expensive state like Florida. As you know, we have eight television markets in Florida, and it's tough to, to reach them all unless you've got money. And when it comes to Val Demick, she pulled off a win last night. She was ahead by a large margin. So it wasn't a huge surprise there for her to win. Now what happens moving forward in that race against Rubio? Yeah, uh, surprisingly, I think, she has been outraising Rubio uh, by a substantial margin. She's also been spending a lot of money. Her problem is, uh, although she's known in central Florida, she's not known statewide. And so she's going to have to spend a lot of money just getting herself to be familiar with the voters throughout the rest of the state. And continue that trend on surprises. Anything that surprised you maybe in the Congress race? Yeah, I was surprised at how well Laura Loomer did. Mm -hmm. She had moved to that district uh, just to uh, uh, challenge Dan Webster, who had been in Congress for a dozen years, been in politics for more than four decades, and she came very close to uh, pulling it off. Yeah, and she hasn't conceded yet, right? No, I think mm -hmm. she's going to uh, to kind of beat the drum against, as you know, against the media and against the, the voting and everything else. Uh, 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 in the end, Dan Webster lost in Sumter County, which is the villages, mm -hmm. and needed his uh, home county, Orange County, the Winter Garden area, uh, to pull it, pull it out for him. So... I'm sure he got the scare of his life last night. Yeah. And, oh, go oh, ahead. Maxwell Frost potentially could be the first member of Congress from Gen Z. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that's an amazing story that uh, when we talked uh, eight, nine months ago, the assumption was that uh, State Senator Bracey had it locked up. Mm -hmm. And then Frost came literally out of nowhere, 25 years old, uh, almost unknown to the voters, but... He had the endorsement of people like Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and uh, the AFL-CIO. He got a lot of progressive money. And, uh, you know, you think about it. Here's a guy, 25 years old, unknown, defeating a state senator and two former mm -hmm. members of Congress. Almost yeah. unheard of. Julie. Yeah, and by a pretty big margin. Yes, by a comfortable margin. Yeah, Yeah, it's interesting to see uh, how much more we can learn about that campaign in, in moving forward. Uh, what about when it comes to the school boards? We looked at the influence of the governor's support behind many of these candidates who won last night. I think that's going to be one of the biggest stories coming out of this uh, primary night. As you know, all year people have been uh, tracking Donald Trump's endorsements, how, how much influence does he still have, and he's batting about 900. So that's, that's been uh, an enviable number. The question was, would the governor have the same kind of impact uh, in school board races? He endorsed 30 people in school boards, uh, and it was kind of a late haphazard thing, and yet so far, 26 of his 30 have won, most running against entrenched incumbents. Two are still, you know, uh, mm -hmm. on the fence. But an amazing night. Not only did he win the nomination, of course, but it really shows his reach that mm -hmm. he was able to control these races. And then attorney Aramis Ayala now taking on Ashley Moody. What's kind of your, your you know, what, is, what does that mean now for, for the yeah, race? Yeah, uh, basically we have someone running for attorney general who is opposed to the death penalty, right. which has never happened in Florida. So, again, I think she has a, an uphill climb. Uh, it's going to be more difficult for her to raise money because I think all the money is going to go for Christ and Demings. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that uh, she's going to have a tougher time. All right. Well, we thank you so much, Dr. Clark, for stopping by again today. So we'll see you soon. Thank you.